Okay, hello and welcome everybody to the By the Beard of Zeus Stamina Templar build video. This is the build video that will be accompanying the written guide that I have on Tamriel Foundry and is the one that I'm going to be keeping the most updated with. So, if you actually want to keep more updated on anything I find out, you're best off looking on the written guide as I can update that any time of the day rather than posting a new video and spamming on my channel. So, for the gear I'm running, uh, monster set is Velodruth. Five pieces Hunting's Rage, complete it on the weapons, because you need Twice Fang Snake, the other set, uh, on all five pieces. Um, if you if you use two Fang Snake weapons, uh, you put, you, because your buffs only last for three seconds, it's going to fall off, so you need to wear the other set on the weapons. Now what you can do is, if you're in running in a really optimised group and somebody's running Night Mother's Gaze and Sunder Flame, you can actually replace Twice Fang Snake with one of the other viable sets that you may be able to run. Now these sets include, and actually can act as a replacement for Hunding's Rage, are War Machine, uh, which gives Major Slayer for you and your to two closest allies, Leviathan, which is actually going to be best once you get it in the right daggers, uh, and Vicious Ophidian. So whilst Vicious Ophidian actually is better damaged than Hunding's Rage by a very, very small amount, it's significantly harder to obtain. And I see a lot of people running out there with maces of the Vicious Ophidian and charged axes and it, it's just simply not, not worth it. The beauty of Hundings is it's player crafted, meaning you can get it in the perfect traits. So the bind up pickup set, bind on pickup sets that you get, so like the War Machine and Vicious Ophidian are only very minorly stronger than Hundings. So therefore you have to really have them in perfect traits. So no more maces, no more charged weapons, double daggers only if you're a Templar and in the right traits, otherwise you're just losing damage. Now arguably War Machine is one of the best sets to run because it gives empowerment to your other allies, however I personally don't really like it. Uh, one to four passives got changed this patch, meaning weapon criticals were boosted by 55% and the others were about 11 only. So weapon critical passives are now your Omega Daddy of damage. So Hunding's Rage is going to be really really strong because of this, it has two passives and Night Mother's Gaze also has two if you want to go run that. For solo situations and for group content, Night Mother's Gaze actually pulls exactly the same damage as Hunting's Rage, so don't be afraid to go craft yourself a set of Night Mothers and support your group. Okay, so the other viable monster set would be Selene's, uh, except uh, I'm not really keen on this because of its uh, condition. It mulls the closest enemy in front of you, which means in AoE fights you may not even proc on the boss and only hits one target. While well, Velodrift, while being a weaker monster set, actually can hit three targets at once and has a one piece weapon damage passive that will be stronger than the stamina. Um, I've also seen content out there where people are running Stormfist uh, monster set. I wouldn't really advise this. The proc uh, damage on it is quite nice actually. It pulls about 1.4 to, to 1.5 and actually beats Velodrift and matches Selene's. However, I don't really like its one piece stamina recovery bonus because you simply don't need it. You should be stacking weapon damage and using your heavy attacks to get your resources back, not your passives. If you're this far into Morrowind or just about to end the Horns of the Reach and you're relying on stamina recovery passives and still using stamina recovery food to get by, then you're just wasting your own damage. Okay, so that's the gear sorted. Uh, onto food. I'm using the thief in this video, I need to quickly change it, that's not correct. Uh, I will be using the shadow uh, for reasons, hold on. Yeah, so we'll be using the shadow because with 44 um, points into precise strikes you're actually going to be getting a 105% crit modifier which makes the shadow about 1-2% to stronger than the thief on a stamina templar. I think if you run the same calculations by on stam DK or stam sork or something I think the thief is still the best, but not on Stamina Templar, the Shadow is yeah, under, undoubtedly. That's why Leviathan is going to be so strong on the Stamina Templar, because if you get rid of your Thief Stone uh, and stack the Shadow with Crit Chance, uh, you're going to be really strong. It's almost like a reverse of the Twice Bond Star days, where you were using the uh, Thief Munda Stone for Crit Chance and you're using Twice Bond Star for Crit Damage. All you're doing is switching it around when you go to Leviathan. Now, Leviathan actually got changed this patch. So now it gives 12.5% weapon crit instead of 7.5, as well as having two weapon critical passives. I think it equates to something like 17.6% crit now for having a full set of Leviathan, which is just too monstrous to pass up, especially with your Age Spear passive on your Templar. 
Uh, where is it? Critical damage done, there we go. An extra 10% using your minor force from your trap. My, uh, major force from Horned as well. It's just going to be unstoppable. I haven't exactly been very kind with the daggers. Uh, I was spent farming it for five days on live and got about seven infernos and seven lightnings. And I've just given up because hunting really, really isn't that far behind in terms of damage. It's just if you want to pull the extra one or two K, then you're going to need Leviathan. Um, also, if it worries about you're going to have too much crit, you, you're not. If you run the shadow, you'll get about... I'll stick it on. I don't actually have an infused dagger because this is a PTS and they don't give you them in the coffers for some reason. With the shadow, you actually go to 87.3% crit with Leviathan. If you obviously, if you take the 4.5% off the precise dagger that I've got, because it should be infused, and then it takes you down to 83.8. Uh, I tried to aim for about 85% and absolutely no higher, otherwise you're just wasting damage. So yeah, Leviathan is quite good. Okay, so on to food. Um, using max health and stamina food. Don't use uh, the other sustained food, dubious camera and throne. It's just not worth it. I mean, you're losing about 3.2k raw resources just off that, so once you enchant your health back up, you're losing far too much stamina and you're losing far too much damage. It's more damage uh, to actually stay, stop and do a heavy attack in your rotation than it is to use recovery food. Uh, so that's the gear sorted. Uh, okay, on to champion points now. Okay, so blue tree, I set up like this. With 23 master arms. Now, what you can do is, uh, this isn't going to be optimal for every single situation, obviously. You're going to have to keep changing it, but this is a really, really good starting point for most content. So, 35 piercing, you're going to look at that and think, oh my god, that's cheese. Uh, there's too many points into piercing. Uh, quite frankly, I don't think it really is. Um, you're spending it where it's needed and it will give you the most damage in solo content so for VMA and for four man groups where you're just not pulling that penetration then 35 piercing will give you the most damage. Now what, what's beautiful about this is we've gone for lower precise strikes while balancing out the others. So we've actually managed to get pretty much the same damage as before uh, while keeping our precise strikes low meaning in group content once you get all these extra buff, your Torox Crusher, your Power of the Light, your Sunder Flame, your Nightmare's Gaze, your Taunt, etc, etc. All you got to do is, is go redistribute. You take them all out of here. So for example, you get 3k extra penetration from your group, take them all out. And just pile them all in here. Until it reaches 61. And then you just spend these somewhere else. Like I, I can't do all this information for you, you're just going to have to help yourself at this point and not just trust a guy on the internet to do all the calculations for you. A good add-on I would recommend, and I'm not sure if I have it installed in the PTS, is one called Constellations. I'll put a link in the description. And basically what it does is, uh, you open it up after you've opened your metrics pass, so you do a dummy, open up metrics, and what this will do is it will tell you how much of your damage was direct, how much of it was uh, damage over time, and what it can do is you feed in how much penetration you have and it will give you an ideal CP scenario. So I would highly recommend that if you're new to builds and you're not really good with making your CP. Okay, so on to uh, skills next. I've actually been playing around a little bit. Let me just stick my hunting wave back on. Yeah. So, while Sharpen's being nerfed, actually, let's go on to back onto gear a second. While Sharpen was nerfed, if your target is not fully debuffed, i.e. there's still penetration left, you still can run Sharpened. It will still do more damage than precise. And pulling higher numbers um, using a Sharpened bow and a Sharpened dagger um, on these dummies is if there's any penetration left. So don't be afraid to use your old Sharpened weapons if you don't want to craft precise yet. However, precise in raids will be this. 
four four and a half percent crit is just it's just massive. So you can't really go without that. But you know, don't don't look at the patch notes and think, oh god, sharpened is halved. I can never use it ever ever again because you can, and it still works very very well. Uh, your ideal bow would actually be Nern honed, because um, ideally with all these new changes and sharpened being halved it's actually easier to reach the pen cap than before because obviously you'd have to make up 5.1k penetration last time to be able to remove your sharpened but now you've actually got to have less group support to be able to remove sharpened so known head would be your first choice precise would be second sharpened third infused maybe fourth and after that just use any maelstrom bow um, you can actually use, use any maelstrom bow, even if it's defending or powered, because it's the, the enchant on it is, is too strong. It'll, any a powered bow for maelstrom would be a sharpened masters and sharpened any other bow in the game. Okay, so onto skills, and just put my skills back where they were. Where is it? Okay, so for bow bar, you're going to want Vigor on your back bar, Endless Hail, Poison Injection, Razor Cow Shops, not Anti-Cavalry. I've seen people use Anti-Cavalry because it adds two seconds to your rotation and it means that your Cow Shops doesn't fall off when you use Poison Injection. It's quite frankly a DPS loss and you need Razor. The explosion does more damage than the extra two seconds. So Repentance on your back bar, this is actually really nice for your own self-sustain. If you meet a healer in your team that wants to use repentance because they can't manage their own stamina you just kindly tell them to fuck off because you need this for yourself you need this to sustain if you can sustain yourself you can heal yourself better you can survive better and you can do more damage uh, so vigor on your back bar if you have a lot of faith in your healers or you don't really like the idea of running an expensive healing skill then what you can do is you can stick with restoring focus on this uses up magicka which you don't actually need on a stamp plus surprise surprise um, and gives you it's minor mending if you've got the passives, major ward and resolve, minor protection, reducing your damage taken by 8% and increasing your healing received by 8%. So if you trust your healers, what you can do is when you parked yourself attacking the boss, just put your restoring focus down like that and just sit in it like that and do your thing. You'd be surprised at how actually effective that is. However, if you're off tanks running Circle of Protection from Fighters Guild, don't run this because it's the same buff, minor protection. So I like to keep Vigor on there. Purely because, uh, personally in raids, I prefer going for Vitality over DPS. I would much rather take a step back from all the red AOEs, Vigor up, make sure me and my teammates are alive, and then go back in. So. Onto the, oh, on the back bar, sorry, the ultimate. This is the ultimate you're going to be using uh, every time it's ready, and it's Crescent Sweep. So it's extremely cheap, it is your best damage ultimate, uh, and you should be using it every second rotation. You also need this on your back bar because you need an Adric Spear, Adric Spear ability slotted sorry, for this passive. So on your dual wheel bar, you're going to want Rearming Trap on your front bar, not your back. Deadly Cloak. Now this is a really nice skill actually because it reduces the damage you take from area effect attacks by 25%. Essentially this is going to save your life more than a shield. Uh, biting jabs, possibly the most powerful ability in game, arguably. Rending slashes, another dot to proc your weapon enchantments. And power of the light, which is also a very, very powerful single target ability. And it also gives you a very nice group buff. Minor fracture and minor breach. And will also, if you don't have another Templar in your group, will give you the Illuminate passive, which gives minor sorcery to you and your group for 20 seconds. So, with the kind of Magplas going out of style a little bit and out of raid teams, people seem to forget about this passive. So, you you know, you're helping your team a lot by giving them 5% spell damage. It will help your healers with, the, with their healing and will help your DDs around you. So. Uh, Dawnbreaker on your front bar, obviously, because it's 5% weapon damage for being slotted, and an extra 3% from the Slayer passive. So it's the 8% it used to be. Uh, it's technically more powerful than Crescent Sweep. If you took how much they cost away, Dawnbreaker would be more powerful. Except per, per, per point cost, it's not as strong as Crescent Sweep. So if you're starting a fight, you can actually open with a Dawnbreaker and then begin using this afterwards if you really really want to suck the extra 100-200 out of your pass. 
uh, if you're running trial scenarios and other group scenarios as well where you don't need cloak maybe it's a pledge run and everything's too easy you don't really feel like you're gonna die you actually get more DPS by putting your couch ups on your front bar I fucked that up by putting your couch ups where deadly cloak was this is because uh, you complete a set on your dual wield bar, so you get the last weapon crit and the weapon damage when you switch onto dual wield. If you compare your stats when you're on your dual wield bar, look weapon damage and weapon crit, to your bow, you've just lost 800 weapon damage and 15% crit. So do the math, you really don't want to be on your bow bar, especially when it doesn't have an enchantment that helps DPS as well, like a shock or a poison or something like that. You want, the, le the less time you can spend on your bow bar, the better. This is why you'll never put trap on your back bar. If you're there, go in one, two, three, instead of one, two. The longer you spend on your dual wheel bar, the better. Okay, so finally, to finish off, I'm going to talk about the rotation that I do. There is actually quite uh, a lot of them that you can do, and for different scenarios, it's going to be better. Let me just quick slot my potions. So, to start off with, let me just do it slowly for everybody. You start with a trap, then go back onto your bow bar. So you go trap, endless hail, light attack, cow drops, light attack, ultimate, light attack, back. That's your bow bar. So the bow bar will always stay the same. So trap, hail and then ultimate if you have it. Uh, you shouldn't really be using poison injection above 50%. Uh, this is because the Maelstrom Bow actually has its own unique enchantment. So you don't have a poison glyph on your back bar, meaning poison. the only way poison inject was going to be higher damage is if you're a stand DK with the status effect passives, um, or if this actually had its own poison glyph enchant, which you can't because obviously it's got its own unique one. Um, so, in terms of priority, when you do go below 50, you want to start using Poison Injection. Your priority list for your bow is always do your hail first, your cow chop second, your ultimate third if it's ready, and always do your injection last. This is because you can actually animation cancel your Poison Inject and get all ticks on your dual wheel bar for maximum damage. So, when you come back onto your dual wheel bar, you want to light attack your rending slashes, heavy attack your power of the light, Heavy attack your trap, heavy attack your jabs, light attack your jabs, light attack your power of the light. Let's do that again. Light attack rending, heavy attack power of the light, heavy attack jab, trap, heavy attack jab, light attack jab, light attack power of the light. There is a written um, detail on the uh, Tamriel Foundry guide for this, so if I'm not talking clearly or it's not making a lot of sense, then you can always look at the written form of it. So if you want to use blade cloak in your rotation, <coughs> what you'll do instead is light attack rending, heavy attack power, heavy attack trap, and then light attack cloak, and then heavy attack depth, light attack power. So light rending, heavy power, heavy trap, light cloak, and then heavy jabs, light power. And so, if you're going into a 40 second fight <coughs> and you want to burn all of your 38k stamina that you have, what you'll do is you'll run in and you'll heavy nothing. So, you light rending, light power, light trap, and then light free jabs. Light power and back. So, you want to burn your resources, light, light. Up, three jabs, and then light power and back. So to visualize this, what I usually do on a free mill dummy is I do the burst rotation first, then go on to my heavy attack rotation. <coughs> if you're struggling that you can't sustain because you're even orc or you're not a red guard, then what you can do is instead of light weaving your rending slashes, all you have to do is heavy it. Adding one heavy into your rotation should help. So, as a visual visualization, it should look something like this.
I used a heavy injection, uh, poison injection, sorry, because you need to cast three skills on your Bogar for your dots to line up. If you want to light, light weave rending slashes, if you don't want to cast a poison injector for 50%, <coughs> all you have to do is just heavier rending instead. Okay, so at 50%, use injection. BTS is absolutely horrible. Okay, then when you reach about 300k, they start to just straight out jab. Now, you'll hit higher, obviously. If you don't got PTS lag, you don't fuck up, you're not talking for it, etc, <coughs> etc. Et I think the max I got was about 39.5 to 40k with that factor, which actually makes this one of the most powerful stamina classes. I'd probably say maybe second behind the Stam DK. So yeah, this has a lot of potential if used correctly, and if you give it some love, it will love you back. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and 